Hi, sixth graders. Hope everybody had a nice week. Um, before we start our lesson um, in reviewing what we learned from last week, I have a joke for you. Okay, my joke is, how does Darth Vader like his toast? On the dark side. Okay, so let's review what we learned from last week. Remember, we talked about what is a goal. So a goal is something that you want to achieve. Good job. Um, who can remember the four things that you need to consider in order to name your goal? Remember, the first step is naming your goal. So what are the four goal naming criteria that you need to uh, reach to make sure that you're, or that you need to, to follow to make sure that your goal is reachable? So the goal should be personal. Remember, it has to be personal to you, something that you want to achieve. Uh, not something that your friend cares about, but something that you care about. Um, also, it must be possible, something that is uh, you have the resources and the time that you can accomplish it. Uh, remember to, to name your goal in positive action words. Okay, so make sure that um, you are stating what you want instead of what you don't want. And remember to be specific. Okay, so setting measurable amount of time. Um, and um, be specific in what you want to reach. Okay, so think about the goal. Um, we talked about setting a goal for uh, a short-term goal. Um, and how many of you have made progress towards that goal since we, we saw you last, uh, last week? Okay, so hopefully you did. Hopefully some of you at least made some progress. Maybe some of you have actually reached your goal. So good job and thanks for thinking about that during the week. Okay, so let's just review before we start our next lesson on decision making um, in the six steps to reaching the goal. So remember, the first step is to name it. Okay, remember to name your goal. What is your goal that you want to achieve? Um, and that's where we talk about the four goal naming criteria. Picture, or sorry, make sure it's personal, possible, specific, and positive. Okay, number, step number two is picture yourself reaching it. So that's where you're visualizing in your head, um, you reaching your goal. Step three is saying I can. So this is the positive self-talk, making sure that you're being positive to give yourself the confidence that you can reach your goal. Uh, step four is thinking about how you're going to do it, uh, making your action uh, steps um, of how you're going to achieve your goal. And once you do um, think of your, your, um, the ways that you're going to achieve your goal, then number five would be to go for it. Okay, so go for it, reach your, or to do your goal, um, accomplish it. And once you're done and you've accomplished your goal, then number, step six would be to celebrate your success. Okay, great job. So it's important to set goals in life. Um, setting goals can help you stay focused. Um, it helps you to know what you want to accomplish in your life and gives you a plan, okay? And setting goals and taking steps to reach them involves many, or making decisions. So today we're gonna talk about making responsible decisions. Okay, as sixth graders, you make decisions every day. Um, what kinds of decisions do you make? Um, you make decisions on what to eat, what clothes to wear, when to do your homework, uh, who you talk to, what you talk about, who you hang out with, what music to listen to, uh, maybe what sports to play, what instrument to play, um, whether to answer a question in class or not, um, also how to behave in class. Okay, so we make lots of decisions every day. Okay, I'm going to ask you a series of questions with two options. Okay, if you choose the first option, then you can stand up. If you choose the second option, then I want you to sit down. All right, I want you to make your decisions as quickly as you can without looking or talking to anyone else. Okay, you got it? All right, first um, question or decision that you need to make. You are to either watch a movie at the theater or watch a movie at home. Okay, so if you wanna watch the movie at the theater, stand up. If you wanna watch the movie, second option at home, sit down. Okay. Solve math problems or read a book. 
eat ice cream or eat cake? I know I would be standing up for this because I like ice cream better than cake. Earn money or spend money? Receive a surprise birthday gift or receive a gift you picked out? Hmm. I know a lot of a lot of times as kids get older, they much rather get money for their birthday so that they can make um, or pick out what they really want. Have a kitten or a puppy? Eat peas or eat carrots? Tell a joke or hear a joke? Wake up early to watch cartoons or uh, keep sleeping? Go to a football game or go to the ballet? Play video games or play outside? I hope you guys would choose play outside. Okay, these decisions were pretty easy, right? Okay, now those decisions were easy to make because we had to pick what we like or what we don't like, okay? These decisions don't have any major consequences. Okay, those decisions that are easy uh, were easy uh, because they didn't have major consequences. Um, you didn't have to stop and think about what could happen if you eat if you ate cake or if you ate ice cream. Okay, unless you're allergic to ice cream, um, there are no serious consequences of having a scoop. Okay. can tell me what a consequence is? Okay, good. So a consequence is a result of or an effect of something that happens. The decisions you make often have consequences. For example, um, if you don't set your alarm clock, what might happen? Okay, so if you don't set your alarm clock, it is not going to ring, right? If your alarm clock doesn't ring, you might oversleep. If you oversleep, you might miss the bus and be late for school. Oversleeping, missing the bus, and being late for, to school would all be consequences of not setting your alarm. Okay, so can consequences be, um, or are they all negative? No, some consequences can be positive. So for example, if you study really hard for a test, um, you're probably most likely going to get a good grade and you're most likely going to pass the test. So that would be an example of a positive consequence for as a result from making a good decision. Not all decisions are easy to make. Okay, you might be uh, faced with more difficult deci decisions like choosing which sport to play or choosing your friends or choosing a career. Okay. So you may have been faced with some of these more difficult decisions already and wondered what to do. Um, today, we're going to learn the steps to help you, that you can take to help you make these difficult decisions. Okay, this is our decision-making poster. Um, we'll help um, you to make your, or the best decision. Um, we're gonna review the four steps together. Okay, so what is the first step? Okay, the first step is to stop. That's right, before making a decision, you need to stop so you can ask yourself, what decision do I need to make? Okay, what could happen if I don't stop before making a decision? You know, if you don't stop and think, you might do something you, you could regret, okay? So what does impulsive mean? Impulsive means acting without thinking. Um, I'm sure you've all experienced making an impulsive decision um, and maybe that decision didn't turn out so great, okay? You could have had some negative consequences of, of that impulsive um, decision, okay? So often we, reg we regret impulsive behavior because it can have negative consequences. Uh, when you follow the first step in decision-making um, and you when you take that time to stop, you are mo more likely to make good decisions and avoid negative consequences. Okay, so what is the second step? The second step is to think. So after you, st after you stop, it's time to think. 
You're going to ask yourself, is this decision going to help me to be the healthy, happy, and confident person that I want to be? Think about what you would like to see happen as a result of the decision that you are about to make. Picture in your mind what your best possible outcome would look like. Okay, when you know what you want to happen, you're going to list your options, okay, and think about the positive and negative consequences to each of these options. Okay, so after you consider the consequences of each ap option, what you're going to do next is the third step, which is act. Okay, so it's time to act out the best decision. Okay, once you've acted on your decision, the last step is to reflect. This is the time to think about your decision making, evaluate how you did, and ask yourself if you made the right choice. If your decision didn't turn out the way you expected, now then it's time to consider what you could do differently the next time you face a similar decision. Okay, it gives you the time to reflect to, to make sure that that was the best choice for you. Um, remember, sometimes, or uh, you know, we make mistakes. Everybody's human. You make mistakes, um, but it's what we do with that with those mistakes. When we take that and we learn from it and we we change our action the next time. Um, that's how we, we learn. We learn to make the right decisions. Okay, so now we're going to consider the consequences. Okay, I'm going to read a scenario about Jose um, and his um, impulsive choice that he made. Okay, so Jose's choice. Jose was hanging out with friends in the school cafeteria. A couple of them were talking about tomorrow's science test and how easy it would be to cheat. Then one of them pulled out a copy of the answer sheet from his backpack and passed it to Jose. Jose looked over the answer sheet and immediately started memorizing the answers. Okay, so Jose did not stop to think about what he was doing. He didn't stop to think about the consequences that could happen um, as a result of his decision. Okay, so think about what, what could have happened to Jose or what could happen to him. Um, I'll give you a second to think about that. Um, and then in a minute, we are going to find out the real life consequences of Jose's choice um, in the next um, scenario. Okay, so I'm going to read you um, a role play of the real life consequences of Jose's choice. Okay, so here we have Jose, we have a resource officer, someone that monitors the hallways um, at the school. Um, sometimes it's an officer. Um, sometimes it might be one of the teachers or a dean of school. Uh, we have a principal and uh, Jose's best friend. Okay, so try to follow along while I play the roles of each one of these uh, characters. Okay, so the resource officer, he says, stop right there. You'll have to come with me. Cheating is against school rules. Jose, but I didn't do anything. This isn't mine. I didn't steal the answer sheet. Resource officer, you are holding in your hands and looking at the answers. Jose, but they just handed it to me. I didn't even think about what I was doing. Resource officer, you didn't think at all. You should have thought about what to do as soon as your peers started talking about cheating. I even heard them. Come on, let's go. Okay, narrator, the school resource officer took the group to the principal's office. The principal. I'm going to have to call your parents. You will be suspended from school for two weeks and you will receive zeros for any work that you miss. Jose, but I have A's and B's in all of my classes. What about my grades? Principal, you should have thought about that before. That night, Jose called his best friend. Okay, now his best friend is, is um, talking to him. Jose, everyone at school has been talking about what you did. My mom found out and I can't and said I can't hang out with you anymore. She says you are a bad influence. They just hand or Jose, they just handed me the answer sheet. I didn't have time to think about it. Best friend, well you should have thought about it. My mom's coming, I have to go. Jose, who would have thought that just by picking up a piece of paper without stopping to think about it, I would be suspended from school and lose my best friend. Okay, so what are the consequences of Jose's impulsive behavior? Well, he was suspended from school. His best friend can't hang out with him. He will get a zero on the test and, and along with um, the other work that he will miss. Okay, so he has some neg very negative consequences. 
Jose had to deal with the negative consequences because he acted impulsively. So when you think about the potential consequences in advance, you can avoid getting in trouble. Okay, so what would you do? Um, in the next slide, I'm going to read some scenarios and I would like you to discuss some possible outcomes and consequences um, of each scenario. Okay, so while re remaining in your seats, um, if it is possible, um, I, you can, after we, I read these scenarios, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes that you can uh, maybe discuss with someone that's close to you, um, well, six feet away from you. Um, but close enough where you can hear each other. Um, if not, I just want you to take time in your hat in your own um, to yourself to think about what the consequences and the outcomes could have been from these uh, scenarios. Um, so number one, our first scenario says you go to the movies and your friend is working the snack counter. He says, "Here's free popcorn. Don't worry, I do it all the time." The manager never notices. Okay, what are options? Okay, make the best decision. Number two, your crush is going to your friend's uh, party Saturday night. You've made plans to be there, but your cousin came, um, or just came in from out of town to have dinner with you and your family and asked you to join. What are your options? Make the best decision. And number three, you are running for student council. You hear a bad rumor about your uh, opponent. If this gets around, no one will vote for her. You know the rumor isn't true. So what are your options? Make the best decision. So you might need to pause the slideshow just to have some time to discuss these or to think about these options. So in each of these scenarios, you had a decision to make, right? Notice how some of the options had a positive benefit in the short term, but also had a long-term negative consequence. Um, other options may have forced you to give up something you wanted to or wanted in the short term, but were positive in the long term. Okay, if you stop and think about the decisions you have to make, you'll you will be more uh, or you will be able to predict the consequences of your op options. Then, when you take action, you will be confident that you have made the best decision. Often our ability to stop and think is affected by anger or fear or some other emotion, maybe sadness. Uh, so that's why next week we will discuss how to identify our emotions and how we can manage them effectively. Okay, so when we're making decisions, we um, will be able to stop and think about what, what is influencing us, what emotion is influencing us in the decision we're making and make sure that it's the, still the best decision that we can make. Okay, so that's the end of lesson two. Um, also, or again, we have our email um, slide up so that if you have any questions or if you have any comments that you would like to add, um, please do so. Um, if you have access to email, you can email us at scaza at, prevention at gmail.com. Okay, and I hope every, excuse me, everybody has a great week and I will um, see you on lesson or when we review lesson three. Thanks.